Well guys, we are at Parados and fried ravioli and Blake is trying to get some of the fried ravioli right here. <laughs> Looky, looky, folks, we are in the Del Mar Loop. Very exciting. In front of one of my favorite places, Vintage Vinyl. And look who I have with me here. We've got Jamie and Blake hopping in. <laughs> We're gonna have so much fun. This is the Del Mar Loop. It is an amazing place here in St. Louis, Missouri. Full of history, everything from vintage to, of course, vinyl and the home of Chuck Berry. So this is going to be so much fun to go around today. We've already had a great day in the state sale place, and now we are heading into Shops and Vinyl, and it is going to be excellent. So follow us along for a fun trip in the Del Mar Loop. Okay, so we are going in Vintage Vinyl, one of my favorite audio places to shop for vinyl in the entire country. This place is super fabulous. There is a lot of great things here to see. All the records are very well organized. I will be doing Record Store Day here because I will finally be here for Record Store Day, which is very exciting. And Blake is already on the move because we both cannot wait for all the vinyl. This place is incredible. Absolutely massive with tons and tons of vinyl to look through. So let's get to crate digging. Oh my gosh, so exciting. So one of the cool things about vintage vinyl is they have a listening section here. So if you find any used vinyl, you can actually listen to it, which I really like. I love when record stores have that. It ensures that what you're getting is going to play and sound great. And man, there's just so much to go through. I don't even really know where to start. Probably going to hit the soul section first and see what other 50s stuff they have. I have found quite a lot of Chuck Berry here because, well, this is the home of Chuck Berry. So it is going to be an excellent search for some of this great music. Ma Rainey is excellent, guys. She is the mother of blues. Just excellent. That is a really nice compilation album there. They've got quite a few great uh, albums, including Jimmy Reed. Uh, liking this selection here. I think this is quite good. And tons of other fabulous blues stuff. You're going to find a lot of it here in St. Louis. Uh, look at this. Ooh. Very exciting stuff. Loving digging through all of these records. I think I even saw some Bessie Smith here. Let's see. Yeah. Good old Bessie Smith.
original tapes. Can't beat it. And you have all of these? I have a lot of them. I stopped kind of like, getting all of them. I like, kind of now I'm more selective. Like, that makes really sense. Good. This is another classic. The classic vinyl series is, is you can't beat it for that price. Yeah, and the blue note stuff is excellent, isn't it? Yeah. What's special about the blue note? Well, it's just an old jazz label that promoted a lot of these guys. I mean, Kenny Burrell and Art Blakey are very famous, but they promoted a lot of smaller kind of. Like, this is really good. This is a tone poet. This is something you probably, I mean, it was probably hard to find. It probably wasn't produced much, but they're kind of going back to it. So, but that's, that's a really good one. So, what do you think of their jazz section so far? Got everything. <laughs> That's it's excellent. Got everything. I'm actually going to see if um, there's a um, Kenny Dorham album that just came out. That would be cool if they have it. Nope. What's back here? No. Nope. They don't have it unless it's on like a wall or something. If you sit it down, you can have to pick it up. That just came out, the Jackie McQueen put the scales. But I didn't get it. You know way more about jazz than I do because I am not a jazz guy. I just, I hear it from other people. I don't really know that much. I can't just listen to like all those guys on YouTube talk about it. That's true. There are a lot of uh, vintage vinyl people that love. This is good. These uh, 60 anniversary acoustic sound series the Impulse are really good. I have that. I have that. And to find an original of one of these records, oh, yeah, how really much would it cost? Prob probably close thousands. to the 50s stuff. This is really good too. Live at the Village Vanguard. Like, there's no, there's no reason, unless you're the originalist, there's no reason to buy original when you can buy something that was just made all analog from the original tape. And it's probably going to sound better because there aren't scratches and dirt. Not scratches, not dirt. Blows it on the water. It's not even close. Maybe I need to get into the world of jazz. Let's try it. <laughs> Well guys, we are in the loop and we are headed to one of my favorite spots here, Blueberry Hill. This is of course a very famous music venue for lots of musicians. Chuck Berry played here quite a bit. And check out this neon sign. Now I have to take you back here at night because it does light up. The dancers move a little bit, the stars move, and it's just so much fun. This place has some great fare. And on the inside they have the world's largest Chuck Berry Museum with all kinds of really cool history. So we're gonna go inside here, have some lunch, and check out some of the cool stuff they've got. 
So one of the things that I've learned while I've been doing this vlogging trip is that it is really hard to film and walk at the same time. I'm used to sitting down in a chair and doing a pre-recorded video with the camera all set up nicely. So this is definitely a different experience for me. This is the world's largest Chuck Berry memorabilia spot in the entire world. So they've got a lot of cool Chuck Berry things as well as just other collectibles and neat vintage items. This diner is really cool. They of course have a music venue in the back. Lots of famous artists have played here many times including Chuck Berry as I mentioned. And of course all of the Chuck Berry memorabilia is right when you walk in the door. And I never get tired of seeing this. Look at his guitar, Chuck Berry picture disc on vinyl and so many other cool things. He was introduced into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame so they've got an article there about that. Some books, Chuck Berry wine, they've got all kinds of concert tickets, posters, articles, pictures. I mean, it is just really fabulous. And I think it's so cool to see. Every time I come to Blueberry Hill, because I've got family here, I have to see the Chuck Berry stuff. I never get tired of seeing it because of course I'm a huge fan of early rock and roll and 50s stuff and Chuck Berry is just amazing. Now this little flamingo picture here just reminded me so much of Jeffrey over at Real Nifty Vintage. And then of course they've got tons of little advertising pieces all over the walls. And one of my favorite things is this yellow cab cigar sign. Now I don't think this is an original sign because if it were they would have to pay a pretty penny because those are very rare and hard to find but it's neat to see uh, that image on a sign and they've got all kinds of things from the game that you just saw hanging on the walls to little display cases full of collectibles like howdy doody and sports themes and even the Simpsons yes that's right they have a whole display of Simpsons memorabilia from like little Pez dispensers to all kinds of figurines and different items. It's so interesting and this is a place that you could just wander around for hours just to look at the displays. Now my camera went a little dark here because they've got a lot of neon signs in this place but it's so fun. Look at the giant swan at the top. I mean you can't beat it and of course all of these little pieces here are very interesting. I think a lot of this uh, stuff was some records and hockey things and different sports memorabilia and this display case and then of course yes they have a pac-man room they have all kinds of different types of collectibles as you can see here in this display case now it's mainly pac-man stuff in this room however they do have some beetles some different things here and they even have a whole section of I Love Lucy, which I think is so fun. Gotta love all things I Love Lucy. And then check out this other display case. Just amazing. And lots of Pac-Man stuff all over the walls. This is kind of fun room because it's secluded so you can sit down, relax. It's not too loud in here. And of course you can look at the giant Pac-Man mural on the wall that they have. With all the little lighted Pac-Man ghost guys. They are so fun. I love the cherry and the orange there too. And then you've got all these classic cars with all the kind of uh, Petroliana stuff, miniature oil pumps, gas pumps, all that kind of stuff. It's just a lot of fun and I highly recommend this restaurant if you're ever in the St. Louis area. It's got some great food too. All right, Jamie, what do you have here? I have, I will show you. I have a BLT oh, with onion. Oh, that looks amazing. Yes, and lots of onions. Onion rings. Onion rings. Amazing. No pickle. Pickle is 86 out of here. Blake, and Blake, what do you have? He's, he's beer tasting right now. Oh, yummy, yummy. Show her what brother you got. I haven't. What'd you get? Roast beef sandwich. Roast beef. Oh, that looks amazing. Okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. How are the onion rings, Blake? Oh, these look so good. All right, we've all got something different. I got a burger with onions, cheese, onion rings, excellent classic Coca-Cola. Oh, beer battered onion rings. Oh, these are going to be excellent. All right, folks, we're going to eat now. So, 
howdy duty alert a lot of you guys might find this display a tad creepy and to be honest i did as well i'm not a big doll and figurine fan however i know howdy duty is so classic and they have a pretty big collection of vintage howdy duty stuff so if you're in the howdy duty this place is going to be your heaven because they have everything from bobbleheads to old toys to face masks for kids to lunch boxes to all kinds of things but i'm sorry i find howdy doody a tad tad creepy uh look at that kind of weird mangled howdy doody in the bottom but anyway this is a pretty cool display so i thought i'd share this with you all and it's right in the loop in blueberry hill so this is home of Chuck Berry, St. Louis, Missouri, and of course the Del Mar Loop is known for all of its Chuck Berry memorabilia and murals, and they have a fabulous Chuck Berry statue here with a little tribute to Chuck Berry, so this is part of their music uh, hall of fame walk, and it is just so cool, located next to Fitz's root beer, which we'll probably be going to later to get a yummy root beer float, but lots of cool stuff here in the Loop. This is just such an eclectic little area filled with all kinds of cool vintage neon signs and some pretty amazing stuff. So I'll document more of the loop as we get a chance to go through it. So we are at the next stop of the day and this is a cool antique and record store that Blake found. I think it's called French Town Records and Antiques. So we're going to go in and see what kind of cool stuff they've got. It's just a lot of fun exploring all these shops here in St. Louis. Multi-horn high fidelity. And oh my gosh, look at some of the choices in the jukebox. Peggy Sue, Buddy Holly, Twist and Shout by the Beatles, The Pretenders are on here, Maybelline, Chuck Berry, The End of the Belmonts, Teenager in Love. Oh my gosh, there is some excellent choices here in the jukebox. Yeah, can we see it work, sir? Yeah, sure. Oh my gosh, this is really cool. Look at this, it's gonna play. Oh my gosh. Uh oh, if it's plugged in, I guess. <laughs> it might not be plugged in. It was plugged in. Let me see if I can plug it in again. Oh, there it is, folks. It illuminates. This is so cool. Oh, the Beach Boys. So Blake, what is back here that's really exciting? Just a lot of Gennady stuff. So what Marantas do they have here? This is the 2270, the one that's on. I don't know if they want it on and off, but I'll leave it on because it was on when I got in here. 2270, they got the 2215 down there, B, the 2215B. <clears throat> they got a really old 60s Model 24. These, I always like this one because it has the Starburst above the Marantz label, like it's, you can see it. Oh it's man, neat. that's very cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and then these are, these are the really heavy hitters. The Macintosh T24, they want twenty five fifty for it. Is that a fair price, you think, for something like that? Probably. Especially if it's been serviced, fully serviced, by top level tech back in November. Oh, that's excellent. So you don't have to, I mean, if it's been fully serviced, you don't have to worry about it. You just plug and play and have fun. They have this one over here. The preamp, this is integrated. This isn't just a preamplifier. This is a, a full amplifier with a preamp. But it looks like this just came back from service. I have this at home. My tech has one. This is slick. Yeah, it's cool. We have a lot of cool stuff back here. You probably don't see a ton of vintage audio all in one spot like this. They even got more well, here. Well, the place in Kansas City we went to had more than this. Oh, wow. It had like multiple rooms of this. That's pure That's heaven. Yeah. And guys, they've got tons of records here. We've had fun really flipping records. through these. It's pretty yeah. cool to see some World's Fair stuff yeah, here because the 1904 World's Fair was in St. Louis in Forest Park. And here's a cool little brochure for $34 for some great pictures and uh, more World's Fair items. This antique mall is pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff to look at. As Jamie pointed out, you really got to keep looking multiple times because you might miss something. 
There is just so much to see here, including these pretty cool little retro clocks on the wall and lots and lots of vinyl. It is really, really fun looking through all of this vinyl here. So this mall had some really interesting items. Their prices were a little bit high, but they seem to know what they have. And they had a lot of Fenton. And I thought that was cool to see. I also loved all the figurines and art glass and paperweights they had in this display case. It was really well lit too. And I like when antique malls do that because I think it really does show off the items well. And look at this blue food dog. So this antique mall really had a wide variety of vinyl and I finally found my grail in this bin. That's right, the Fabulous Miracles on the Tamala label. This is a pretty hard record to find and if you do find it, it's usually costing a pretty penny. But they only wanted 30 bucks for this, so you betcha I went ahead and scooped it up. All right, so we are at Circa Now Records in St. Louis. This is a cool little downtown area. I'm enjoying all the cool architecture, vintage homes, and fun things here. So Blake found this, and I'm excited to see what they have inside. So we're going to go on in. So of course, with Blake being here, we had to make a tour to all the vinyl stores we could find. And Jamie was so patient while we dug through records. This was an interesting store because they had VHS tapes, which I haven't seen in decades. And they had tons and tons of assortments of vinyl to listen and look through and it was just pretty amazing now blake and i really didn't find anything in this store but it was fun to go and it's very very small this is about the size of a studio apartment if not smaller and they had a nice section of different albums but nothing i was really looking to pick up well we are finding all kinds of cool record stores here in the st louis area and this is the record exchange Blake found this one as well. It's in an old bank building or library. It's very, very cool. I'm loving the neon sign and all the cool outside exterior here. So let's go in and see if they have anything fun. So I've been to St. Louis many times and I've never heard of the Record Exchange and it was a lucky find that Blake found on Google and I'm so glad we decided to come here. We weren't planning on doing another stop and then we thought, ah, we could do one more record store and this one's open late and I'm glad we did because the minute we walked in, Blake and I both got really excited because there were just so many records. I mean, when I tell you this place was absolutely massive, it was absolutely massive. You could get lost in here. There's so many records, you'd never be able to see it all unless you spent like an entire day here. It really takes that long to go through everything. They have everything from CDs to DVDs to records and of course stereo equipment, tons of stereo equipment like piled to the ceiling. The guy who owns this says he's been collecting more than 15 years and I got a chance to talk to him a little bit about Record Store Day and he said that they do record store day and it's the biggest and busiest time of the year for them so i was considering maybe coming back here for record store day because they are offering 25 percent off in the store which to me is a great deal on some of the more expensive records i saw now they had a lot of rare records here and i'll show you guys in just a minute some of the 50 stuff they had because i was literally falling over with excitement looking at all the stuff that they had for sale because they had so many rare records and things that you just don't see every day. It was so exciting. And look at all of the stereo gear here. I mean, everything from turntables to receivers to amps. Blake was looking at it all and telling me about the speakers. He's very good with different audio gear and model numbers. He sees a lot of it at estate sales and I don't see so much of it. I don't know a ton about it uh, other than the basic components of hooking up a record player so it was really nice getting a chance to walk around with him and and learn from him because Blake is just so knowledgeable on audio gear and of course we both watch a lot of uh, record guys on YouTube and learn a lot from them as well but you can just see by going through this place I mean the bins and bins of vinyl it was incredible I mean I've just never seen some place like this 
in my entire life i mean i would go back here this is definitely going to become one of my other favorite record stores in st louis now i still love vintage vinyl my heart is with vintage vinyl because of course i got my first record there and that's how i got into vinyl and how my channel name kind of evolved was it was inspired by vintage vinyl in the delmar loop but this place just is something magical and this whole section back here was all classical so blake was having a big time back here okay guys so i gotta show you this this is pretty incredible this is their latest arrival section here and i have never seen so much great original 50s vinyl all in one spot they've really done their research here and they have some great original presses now i do already have the flamingos on in uh, flamingo serenade that is a great record pretty hard to find as well as requestfully yours by the flamingos uh, of course, this has in the still of the night on it. Um, it is a great record. This is a great price for it as well. You've got the five keys on Capitol. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so much Fats Domino on the Imperial label. Oh my gosh, check that out. Just incredible Fats Domino swings. Get on the Imperial. And guys, Bo Diddley, you just don't find this record at all on Checker. Um, I've got this as well at home, but without the jacket. So this is a pretty good record. And then on here, <laughs> look at this. You never find this record. The Crystals, Twist Up Town. In fact, I just bought a reissue of this, and it is so cool to see an original press in person. This is a pretty, pretty tough record to get. Um, very excited to see that here. Uh, of course, you've got In Style with the Crickets on Coral. This is the Crickets after Buddy Holly passed away in that tragic plane crash. And they went on to do their own stuff. And that's a, another tough record. This is a great price for this album here. And then, of course, Dave Baby Cortez with the Happy Organ. Love this on RCA Victor. Another record that's pretty tough to find is the Clovers. This is on the Atlantic label, 8009, with the silver Atlantic label, so I do know it is an original press. Uh, this is fantastic. It's got Love, Love, Love on it, and so many other songs. Um, Devil or Angels on here. Classic Clovers. Gotta love some of that doo-wop. And then, of course, Sam Cooke on Kane. Oh my gosh, I've never seen a Sam Cooke in person. This is incredible. Incredible, incredible. All this vinyl's in great shape as well. Uh, coasters on Attico here. Of course, this has Searching on it. And Loop de Loop. And Young Blood. Oh man, just fantastic here. Frankie Avalon swinging on a rainbow. Look at this Laverne Baker on Atlantic. I believe this is an English pressing. Oh man, you gotta love that R and R whenever you see it because you know it's gonna be excellent. We've got the Angels, my boyfriend's back. Excellent, excellent. I believe uh, Four Seasons are backing up the Angels on this record here. We've got, of course, Annette Funicello with Pineapple Princess. Excellent. U.S. Bonds here on Le Grand with Quarter to Three. I have this record, but it is extremely scratched. Found it for a dollar somewhere, so this might have to be a pickup. And Johnny Burnett here. Oh my gosh. Mona Lisa on this album. On Liberty. Just excellent. And then the biggest finds of the day is King. Hank Ballard and the Midnighters. Never find this stuff on King. All of the Midnighters here. This is excellent. Um, I wish I could get it. <laughs> but they definitely know that it is Hank Ballard and the Midnighters on King. And I think there's some autographs here on this copy but man guys i have never seen this in my life before and i am so excited to see all of this i mean there's just a ton of excellent stuff here in this bin okay guys i've got a few more records to show you this is incredible you've got the delta rhythm boys in sweden the delta rhythm boys were the first group to feature any type of the word doo-wop in their backing vocals in 1940s so this is pretty cool they have Billy Ward and the Dominoes on DECA. Look at this. And the Teddy Bears on Imperial. This is a very, very hard to find record. Holy cow. And then, of course, two Richie Valens on Delphi. This is a very hard to find record. I think I paid 50 for mine, and it's only in VG shape. This one is excellent. This bin right here 
has some of the most rare and unusual 50 stuff I have ever seen in my life. Now, a lot of you guys that are true 50s collectors probably have come across these at record stores uh, or record shows, but I have not, and I don't see a lot of it in my area, so this is like excitement overload for me. <laughs> Even just to get to touch the record is just so cool. So this record store had a whole section just dedicated to tuners, amps, receivers, and all kinds of audio gear piled literally to the ceiling, all stacked up, all priced. I mean, this is amazing. Now, I don't think any of this was particularly top notch, but Blake was having a fun time going through it. And it's really neat to see all of these in one place. We are outside of Ferrado's Pizza. Now, I have been going here since forever. This is one of our family favorite spots here in St. Louis. They have the famous fried ravioli, which is a St. Louis uh, tradition, and all kinds of wonderful pizza. Probably the best pizza you're ever going to get. This is off of Manchester Road in St. Louis in the Brentwood area of St. Louis, and this is just amazing. So, guys, I'm going to take you inside, show you the food and get some really good dinner. And we are with Jamie and Blake from Mid-Century Wasted. We've had a fabulous day uh, shopping vinyl, antiques, and all kinds of cool stuff. And now we are grabbing some grub. All right, here's the menu at Parado's, guys. They've got some amazing stuff here. We're gonna get fried ravioli, the St. Louis special, as an appetizer, and then a pizza. So yes, this all looks so good. Well, guys, we are at Parado's and fried ravioli, and Blake is trying to get some of the fried ravioli right here. <laughs> All right, go for it, Blake. All right, Blake, Blake dive you in. Take the first bite. Let us know how is it. Blake likes it. It's a hit, folks. <laughs> Good. Good stuff. All right, Jamie, you're up. Those are pretty good. All right, let's see what Jamie thinks of it. It's Blake approved already, which has got to be pretty good. <laughs> Yay! It's mid-century wasted approved. We're good. <laughs> Well, the food has come, and I have a whole pizza to myself, which is Provel cheese, black olives, and onions. Provel is a St. Louis favorite. This is at Ferrato's. Blake, what do you have over there? The meat lovers. Meat lovers, and Jamie has... Scallop risotto. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. All right, guys, we're going to eat some supper now. I'm getting my audio equipment. Yep. So here's my Marantz going in the car and uh, I'm rearranging some things. Very exciting. All right, Blake is getting the rest of my audio gear. Look at these beautiful speakers. Oh my gosh, pretty amazing. And we got the Marantz there. Holy cow, guys, this is amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited. So what do we have here, Blake? So you have your Rance 2220 and your University RRL8. Oh my gosh, amazing. I love it. I'm so excited. Well guys, it has been such an incredible day with Jamie and Blake. We have had an enormous amount of fun and I can't wait to do it again soon. We've gone to so many vinyl shops, antique malls, cool estate sale places, and lots of other amazing, amazing restaurants. We just have had so much fun. So right now you guys are getting a view of the Marantz and beautiful university speakers I picked up from Blake. And these are now safely in my hotel room and they are going to come home with me and I'm going to have one killer listening setup now for my vinyl. So I'm going to pat my speakers goodnight because I'm so excited about them. So goodnight speakers. 
Good night, Morans. I'll see you in the morning. You'll be safe here and you'll be coming to Florida. And then we are going to say good night because it has been a fun but long day and we're going to get some rest and hit the arch tomorrow. So I will talk to you guys soon. And of course, before my next video, I'll be seeing you over on Instagram at vintage underscore and underscore vinyl. And I hope as always that you will stay in, stay safe and binge YouTube. Bye bye now.